God bless you and good morning. You know, it's raining outside. That should tell you something prophetically. You should receive that as a word this morning. Instead of saying, oh, gee whiz, it's raining, you say, oh, thank God it's raining. Each drop, hit me, let me, give me the blessing. Um, I'd, I'd like to share something with you that I was asked so many questions several weeks ago about the eclipse. And I'd, I'd like to answer some of those questions because it seems that science has an answer for everything and we rely on that. While it's good, man's knowledge is quite limited compared obviously to the Almighty. And when you just simply see something and want a scientific explanation, you remove all prophetic nature from it and we remain in the natural. And we don't avail ourselves of a, a level of intelligence and blessing that's available to everyone. There's something about God that we need to understand. And, and there are treasures of darkness, hidden wisdoms that unfortunately people so readily ignore. Probably heard it a thousand times. But for 6,000 years, man was held down by gravity. And the law of lift was always there, but they didn't see it and they couldn't take advantage of it. Therefore, there are so many blessings that are available to us, but unfortunately, we seem to be so naturally minded, so scientifically dependent that we're, we're not aware of it. But for example, we were dealing with an individual and he was quite ill and there was no remedy, no scientific medical remedy. The answer finally came down to something that was so depressing. That, well, it's nothing we can do. Make them comfortable. I remember those words with the family many months ago looking and saying, but while we want to make them comfortable, isn't there anything that we can do? Yeah, there's a lot we can do. While we love science and we appreciate the comforts, what in heaven's name do you do when science doesn't have the answer? And so that man and his family now had to venture out, have faith for an entirely different dimension, a higher plane, so to speak. Leave the realm of gravity, find another law, the law of Isaiah 53, that by those stripes you are healed, sir, family, claim it. By the law of Psalm 91, with long life will I satisfy you. By the law of God, by understanding and making ourselves available and to avail those wonderful blessings. Psalm 8. O oh Lord, our Lord. <laughs> you should stop right there and we all go home and meditate on that all day long. It'll resolve everything. O oh Lord, our Lord. How excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. He controls everything, ladies and gentlemen. Every single thing. In, his, in the name of Jesus, you have power and authority to do anything on earth. You can bind in heaven, loose in heaven, bind on earth, loose on earth. You've been given that authority. The fact is, you got to use that authority and have to believe it. Out of the mouth of babes, remember, Jesus quoted this, and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. There's power. There's power in praise. And that's one of the ways to worship and gain an advantage, without a doubt. But listen to this, the scripture I'd like to meditate on. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon, the stars, which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that you would visit him? What is that? When I consider the heavens, don't just see an eclipse. I mean, they traveled hundreds of miles. People came from other countries to see the eclipse. It lasted two minutes. The eclipse with Jesus, when he was on the cross, lasted over three hours. Quite a difference. The longest eclipse in the history of mankind, in the natural sense, is seven minutes. That's as long as it could be. His was three hours. What happened when his eclipse took place? Well, the tombs opened, 
the dead were raised, the curtain in the veil was destroyed so people could go and be with God. And God says, consider the heavens. You see an eclipse, it's just not science. There's a, there's a message there. There's a monumental theme that God wants to, us to gaze at and go, well, look at that. That means that. My Lord, think about it. It's miraculous, but there's a message. There's an incredible message and point that's made. And why people don't get it, I don't know. They rather buy little glasses and look and be in awe, buy cotton candy and celebrate when they're not understanding the profound net nature of that message. Because by golly, sooner or later in life, most people have an eclipse. The light goes out, something looks like it's getting ruined. A dream dashed, a problem that arises. They, it's not as sunny out as it could be. The food doesn't taste as good when you have a burden and something is going wrong. When there's always a worry back here. That's an eclipse. And sometimes it comes suddenly, sometimes slowly. But the good news is that the sun is never permanently blinded. The sun, that eclipse is only for a moment. It's going away. It's only an eclipse. I don't care what you're going through. It's only an eclipse. The sun is coming right back. It's still there. Your dream, your promise isn't going anywhere. It's only an eclipse. Listen to me. I am telling you, somebody needs to hear this. I don't know what disappointment, what prayer isn't answered, what you're longing for. Stop thinking you're stuck, you're not stuck. That's the meaning of the eclipse. Listen, it's gonna pass, and that sun is gonna shine so bright in your life. My God, see it, expect it. Cooperate, consider the heavens. Lord, consider it. Say, you know what? I'm done with stinking thinking. I'm done being negative. That's going to pass. I declare in the name of Jesus. Good morning, God. I have a new day coming. For real. You've got to see it this way. And the Bible is replete with these circumstances, these occurrences. Over and over again, studies, stories like Jehoshaphat, they're done. There's a avenging army coming, and boy, are they coming. We don't even have a sword. What are we going to do? We're dead. That's what it sure looked like. They had trampled nation after nation. Same thing with Hezekiah. Nation after nation, vanquished. And now they're coming at Israel. Israel's this tiny little nothing of a nothing. And here comes this gigantic army, bloodthirsty, vicious, and what an eclipse. It looked like the sun was going out permanently. It did for other nations, but it doesn't for you if you're a Christian. It doesn't for you if you have Jesus Christ. It's not a going out of a light. It's just a passing of a shadow. And sure enough, Jehoshaphat, a couple of people start singing and the army kills itself. Hezekiah, the same thing. My God, in the middle of the night, one angel takes care of the problem. It sure looked like the lights were going out. At the Red Sea, they're hemmed in. Here comes Pharaoh. Unbelievable what's coming. And they think we're dead. No, you're not dead. Your enemy's dead, for crying out loud. You're not getting it. There's a design here. I want to get rid of your enemy. This eclipse is to vanquish your enemy forever so you never see them again. There is one requirement, ladies and gentlemen. My God, there is a requirement. You have to simply know this stuff and believe it. You have to apply it. You have to stop worrying. And I know that's easy to say, but you have to stand. Your knees may be buckling. Make a decision, a mental decision. You may be full of fear. You shouldn't be, but you may be. You may be full of worry, doubt. You can't overcome, you think. But my God, at that moment, we have minds for a reason. Shake, let your knees buckle, but use the decision-making ability even if you have to confess it to yourself. Stand outside, look at the stars, look at the sun. Stand outside, get a computer, look at the breath of the universe, the trillions of stars with a T. Stand outside and see the magnificence of what occurs. Don't tell me about big banks. 
give me a break. I'd be astonished if the Big Bang made a worm. But there are billions of species of flowers and insects and living animals and creatures, trees and fish. Billions. You're gonna tell me a Big Bang make trillions of things? You know, stop. There is a God, and He is the Creator, and He's your daddy, He's your father. His name is Jesus Christ. And He says, Consider the heavens! Look at what I've done for you! I'll let you vanquish your enemy. When you see that eclipse, that just means the sunlight is coming better and brighter than ever before. That just means that's a temporary pause. You're not done. You, perhaps you haven't even started. There's something glorious coming. A new beginning. I'm not kidding. Say amen. In the next service, we're going to preach a wonderful message in the Bible. I think, to me, it's difficult to preach because I, I get emotional every time I see God asking Peter, do you love me? And Peter just won't say yes. He just won't. He just won't. And you see there a night of restoration. He must have been tormented those days. And he hadn't seen the Lord and he thought he was dead. The torture. Then once he learns he's resurrected, a different torture comes to play. What am I going to say to him when I face him? I've let him down, I've betrayed him, I boasted. And there's Jesus with seven apostles. That's a total of eight people. Signifying new beginning. Signifying Peter, even your eclipse. Even your dastardly failure. Your betrayal awful as it was here i am peter to restore you and bring you back to life but the interesting thing is he doesn't call him by the name peter he uses his old name simon and he takes him back to a fire exactly the spot that he betrayed him and he says simon do you love me this was a moment of restoration it was a moment of a new beginning. It wasn't to punish. <laughs> it, absolutely not. The awfulness of the story for me is that Peter would never say yes. I thought that was perhaps the high point of Jesus' resurrection, facing his Simon Peter. Come, you love me, right? This time you agape me, right? This time you love me fervently and divinely with a fire of and passion of love, right? And Peter basically says, well, I'm sort of fond of you. I kind of like you. You're a good guy. I cannot fathom the pain in the heart of Christ. There he is to restore us, wanting so badly to hear those words. Do you love me? And Peter, I like you. The last time Jesus speaks to him, he says, okay, Peter, do you like me? He condescends, he compromises, he comes down to our level. His heart breaking inside his chest once again. He loves us so much, he meets us right there. Okay, Peter, do you like me? Do you at least, are you fond of me? Peter, I'll take that. We'll start there. What a restoration, what a new beginning. It looks so bleak, Jesus dead, Peter in denial, fishing back to the old life, and who shows up at the shore? Jesus Christ, and no, 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 we're not done. You're not done, I don't care if you're not perfect. I don't care what you did. I'm here to restore you and pick you up again. It's a brand new morning. This sun is shining again. I'm called the bright and morning star. I'm called the day star. Forget the moon, here I am. So it didn't happen for a hundred years, this eclipse, 100 years, it's fascinating. And we should think nothing of it other than science. We should not consider, well, why is this passing in my lifetime and now? You should say, that was a message for me. That was God saying, the cloud is gone, the darkness is removed. The bright and morning star is shining in your life. Get ready for some extraordinary exploits. The past is done. What a moment. What a prophetic moment. 
Please don't reduce it to science. I beg you, don't do that. Please, see it as a personal message. See it as God doing something unique and wonderful. Don't say, well, there's revolutions and they come on every time. It's science. Oh, Lord. Don't do that to Jesus. Have the sense of David. Let me at least consider. And once I do, I have to pose a question. I must pose the question. What is man? If you would do this for me, God, if you would set in the universe an eclipse to remind me of newness of life, then what am I? Who am I? And what am I to do? If you're so considerate of me, and I consider what you've done, well then, what's the answer? What is man that you would not only make an eclipse, but you would eclipse your own life for me? For me personally, you would do this. Then what am I? How valuable am I? What is the cost of me? The death of God? For what purpose? None? Just to work hard, study hard, attain a certain level of success, get old, play with toys, and end up like that? Really? That's the design. Really? That's preposterous. You were made for greatness. You were launched with uniqueness. You were designed with a very specific design and purpose in mind. You were to achieve exploits and things for God that are miraculous. And don't tell me what I hear somebody thinking, well, how come it hasn't happened? That's the point of the eclipse. If the sun was passing, perhaps, and the moon got in the way. Listen, the moon represents the church. Many times the church, people, get in the way of the brilliance of the sun. They actually obscure the power of God because of a lack of faith, of unbelief. Listen, it's time to raise up, stand up, gird your loins, start believing and saying, you want to know what? What is man when I consider the heavens? What is God that he's thinking about me this morning? Who am I and what am I to do for my Savior? Let me know. And have that level of expectation and faith. I pose to you that an eclipse is an opportunity to rethink our ways. It is such a sign. It is so, the enormity of it is so amazing that it should cause, pause and reflection to think about what we're to do, to reconsider and open the door of faith, to say, you know what? I've really not been perfect in my faith. I truly have not given God the opportunity to shine brilliantly. The obstruction has been myself, my character. It's been me. I've had too many weights on my life but I don't care what you are. A tusk is never too heavy for the elephant to carry. I don't care what you're carrying. You're stronger than what you think you are. I don't care what's happened. You just rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Take your authority and watch how it turns to ivory. And you realize, man, I was pretty cool all along. I just didn't know. I didn't realize I had a rod in my hand like Moses. Last point. They're at the Red Sea. You know they're terrified. You know it. Imagine it for a moment. They're there, as we said before, hemmed in, caught, in fear. Moses himself has a moment of doubt. Can you imagine this man, this giant of a man, doesn't know what to do? And he cries out to God. And one of the most significant lessons in all of the Bible is that God, in essence, rebukes him and says, what are you crying to me about? Handle it, Moses. Pick up that rod that's in your hand and do what you have to do. Obviously implying, Moses, you've got all the power in the world. What are you bothering me for? You do it. Man, do Christians have to hear that? You've got all the power in the world. You see, when he said, what is man? That's, 
That's the question. Christians don't get that they're new creatures created in Christ Jesus, that they are ambassadors, not for a president or a queen, for God. That they have the power to bind and loose in heaven and on earth. That they have the name of Jesus to pray and rebuke. They don't consider. And Paul rebukes them. You're acting like mere men. They don't realize what they are. So when you see that darkening, why don't you do what Moses had to do and say, you know what? I've considered the heavens. I've considered what I am. I'm realigning the thoughts about myself. I am the child of Jesus Christ. I have the righteousness of God. I am clean as a whistle. I have power and authority. And I'm taking it. I'm picking up that rod and I'm splitting that Red Sea and baby, there ain't gonna be no more eclipse in my life. They only come around every hundred years. I'm done with the darkness. In Jesus' name.